I'm Ashira Unger. Welcome back to The Kosher Convert. This is our first episode of the summer. Now, summer makes me think of long days, hot weather, and great fresh veggies. And that makes me think of gazpacho. Gazpacho is a soup that's served cold, and you can make it a day or two in advance, so it's perfect for Shabbos in the summer. Here are the ingredients for our gazpacho. Now, my recipe is based on weights because I feel like that's the most precise way to get the correct amount. If you don't have a food scale, I did do sort of rough estimates of how much volume is in each item. Quarter pound of French or Italian bread with the crust cut off. Now, traditionally, gazpacho is made with stale bread, and so if your bread is a little bit old, that's perfect. 12 ounces of tomato, that's about two and a half cups six ounces of red pepper, which is about a cup and a half, six ounces of cucumber, which is about one and a quarter cups, three and a half ounces of onion, about two thirds of a cup, one to two cloves of garlic, depending on taste. And then I start with about half a teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of pepper, and then I add later to taste. And finally, our liquids are two tablespoons each, of cooking sherry, red wine vinegar, and olive oil. This is a really easy soup to make. There's not even any cooking. All you need is a blender or a food processor. Now, because of that, you do wanna make sure that you use the freshest veggies possible because those flavors are really gonna come through. Now, the first step is to soak the bread in water to get it a little bit soft. And this is important, especially if the bread is stale because it's gonna get it to be nice and soft so that it'll blend well. Basically, just put enough water to cover and let it soak for just a few minutes. And once that's nice and soft, we're actually gonna wring it out a little bit before we blend it. You don't have to wring out the bread to be totally dry. It should be soft, but it's okay if you get some water in there. And I blend it in two batches because my blender is not big enough to put everything in at once. So basically I do half in one batch and then put it into a big bowl and then I do the rest of it. And just blend until it's very smooth. Okay, and that is all it takes. Really simple. Just put the soup in the fridge to sit for about two hours and the flavors will develop a little bit. And then we're gonna strain it and you're done. Okay, so our soup has been chilling in the fridge for about two hours and that gave the flavor some time to develop. The next step is to strain it. And I think that's actually the most important part of making gazpacho correctly. I think the key is to get the right size strainer. Now, this is kind of a medium mesh, and I've tried to do this with a really fine mesh before, and it was a complete disaster. Uh, I've tried it with a strainer with really big holes, and that was completely useless. And so I think it's really important to get something kind of in the middle. Just put that over a bowl, and pour the gazpacho in, and then work it with a spoon to kind of get it through the mesh. Now, even with this kind of a mesh, it's not just gonna go all the way through. Some of the liquid will kind of start to go through, but you are gonna need a spoon to kind of work the rest of it down. So it just takes a few minutes. You can see those little bits of skin and seeds right there that the mesh is catching. Once it starts to get thick like this, you're pretty close. Um, and you know, you can stop straining at any time here because none of that re is really gonna go through. So this is what you end up with. Gazpacho can be a lot of fun and it's very easy to make. You can garnish it with almost anything, bread. A lot of people use the uh, vegetables that are actually components and serve those and allow people to just add what they want. And even the pulp 
that we got from the strainer could be used as a little bit of an appetizer. So there are a million things you can do with it and it really is perfect for summer. As always, recipes and other information will be on our website and you can find us on Facebook. Bye,